Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 160, dated January 17th, 2021. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, Why Britain Avoided the Vietnam War. You know, virtually everybody has at least heard of the Vietnam War, even if you might not know anything about the conflict per se. And that's fine. You know, we're not going to go into the details of Vietnam, but rather just explore why Great Britain never got involved in it, besides the fact that they were very smart people for not doing so. Now, we all know that uh, the United States essentially bore the most cost in the Vietnam War of any Western country that participated in it. And, you know, in the 1960s, uh, the administration of President Lyndon B. Johnson placed strong pressure, you know, on the Harold Wilson government in Great Britain, uh, urging him, pressing him, begging him nearly to send troops to Vietnam to help the U.S. out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Wilson wasn't about to do that. And there were four main reasons why the United Kingdom, Great Britain, said hell no to entering into the Vietnam War. The first reason was Britain's economic state in the 1960s. The British economy in the 1960s was anything but delightful. Indeed, you know, uh, due to labor strikes and, you know, uh, the devaluation of the pound, indeed, the British economy was, in the 1960s, to put it mildly, a step above terrible, all right? And the last thing the British economy would have needed would, to be would be, need to be strained by a war thousands of miles away from Britain itself, and a war which had nothing to do with Britain in the first place. All right? British figured that's you all's thing, America. You know, if you want to get involved in Vietnam and, you know, we understand why you're there, of course, but why should we get involved? All right? So that's the first reason, economic issues. All right? The next reason was that the British knew it was a bloody trap. <laughs> it was a trap. As, as I've said, you know, Britain, of course, was one of the world's most uh, formidable colonial powers up until the end of World War II. So they knew a thing or two about dealing with uh, unruly locals that wanted to be free of the chains of colonialism. Britain wisely knew, based on the experience, their own experience first in the Boer War, uh, in South Africa at the early, in the early 20th century, and from the Indochina War, which began immediately after World War II uh, and lasted until 1954, fought primarily between the French and the Vietnamese and Laotians and uh, Cambodians. You know, the British learned very well from that conflict that uh, these people would not stop resisting until European presence was gone. The British saw the tremendous cost that the French had to endure for, for, nine, for eight years in Indochina, and it was all for naught, as ultimately the French ended up withdrawing from Indochina in 1954. And who would take their place fighting in the region? The United States of America, indeed. Sadly, the Americans didn't learn the lesson that the British did from France's struggles in Indochina, indeed. So the Americans, that's their hubris of invincibility. The Americans thinking they can beat anyone, gladly since they took over the place of the French, you know, in Indochina and fighting there. And we all know what happened with America in Vietnam, so needless to say. So, the British knew it was a trap. They knew that if they got involved, they would end up humiliated just like the French. And, you know, they refused to tag along with America in the boondoggle quicksand pit of Vietnam. 
They knew the Vietnam War was going to be an endless struggle, and that's exactly what it was until America finally decided to withdraw from the war. Guess what? If Britain had involved herself in Vietnam, she would have followed the same course and run out with her tail between her legs, much like America did with Vietnam, all right? Although President Nixon described it as peace with honor. C'est la vie. So that's the second reason. They knew it would have been a trap that they wouldn't have been able to get out of. It would have been an endless boondoggle of a war, much like America's war in Iraq was, all right? You know, history always points to examples, okay? The British knew from the French-Indochina war there. The region is called Indochina, by the way. So the British learned from France's struggles this was not the place to be fighting, okay? Reason number three. In Britain... As with a great deal of other nations around the world, the Vietnam War was very unpopular. And even if the government, uh, you know, even if Britain's financial state was great, and even if there was a high likelihood of victory, the war was very unpopular with the British public, all right, as it was with the American public, all right. And had Prime Minister Wilson decided to involve Britain in the Vietnam War, Bloody nonsense, believe me, his government would have been defeated at the polls and the conservatives would have returned to power in Britain, all right, as they would in 1970, but that's a whole different thing, all right? So it was very unpopular and, you know, the Wilson government was not about to jeopardize its standing in involving Britain in a war that the virtually most of the country opposed, all right? And last but not least, and perhaps... Even if the other three factors had checked out in the affirmative, Britain was still very salty at America for her betrayal of Great Britain at the Suez Crisis of 1956. I'm not going to go into heavy detail with that. That's a video of its own. But the Suez Crisis of 1956 occurred when Egypt decided to nationalize the Suez Canal, all right, and took full military control of the canal. In response to that, Britain, France, and Israel attacked Egypt, all right. The Suez Canal, for all intents and purposes, was British-owned and operated, okay, as it had been, you know, for nearly a century, okay. And when Egypt decided to nationalize the Suez Canal, the Brits said, oh, hell no, all right? And thus, you know, they were the leader of basically that coalition of Britain, France, and Israel to attack Egypt and drive them out of the canal zone, all right? But, 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 Britain unfortunately believed that in attacking Egypt, America, their closest ally, you know, their ace, they believed America would have their back, but America didn't. In a very rare instance of United Nations uh, agreement, the United States and the Soviet Union essentially told Britain, France, and Israel to get the hell out of Egypt right now and let the Egyptians have the canal. Needless to say, the British were furious, furious at this betrayal by the United States, who they thought they could count on for anything. I guess they learned the hard way, huh? In any case, you know, the Brits really, really, really were furious, and them, along with the French, and the Israelis to a lesser extent, but really the British and the French were truly, they fell some kind of way. I mean, they really bloody fell some kind of way that the Americans basically said, hmm, we don't know anything. Just get out of Egypt, all right? Get out of Egypt. You know, they thought we would have their back, but we left them out to dry. It was really a terrible betrayal. And, you know, Britain really remained salty over the Suez betrayal for many years after 1956. Matter of fact, it took Britain about two decades to fully get over Suez. Um, and they, and, their refusal to get involved in Vietnam was just one of many reasons, one of many ways, rather, that they retaliated against the U.S., you know, for America's betrayal of them at Suez. And it's really amazing that the Americans, you know, completely turned their back on Britain at Suez and then had the bloody goal 
to ask for Britain's help in Vietnam. Unbelievable, but indeed it happened. You know, and, and America never formally apologized to Britain for such, such, you know, betrayal. But, c'est la vie, that's life. You know, America sided with Egypt. You know, that was the last thing Britain was thinking that the U.S. would do, but they did. And, you know, to my knowledge, America never apologized for the betrayal. But believe me, I think we kind of made up for it with the Falklands War and helping Britain regain the Falkland Islands in 1982. So, uh, and they also got their revenge for Suez in uh, 1973 when um, Britain refused to allow America to use... Um, some of their air bases in the Mediterranean for military operations during the Yom Kippur War. So America asked Britain, "Could we use some? Uh, could we use some of your uh, military bases in the Mediterranean?" And the British said, "Ah, oh, I don't think so. No, 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 sir. Uh, uh, uh. Make it the best way you can, but you're not going to use our air bases." So they got their revenge like that too, and so that was that. And so, like I said, by the end of the 70s, you know, the saltiness over Suez was gone. Indeed. So, those are the four reasons that the British absolutely, positively refuse to involve their country in the U.S.-led Vietnam War. All right? Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or controversies, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. All right? I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, uh, I invite you to do so right now. It costs you nothing whatsoever and it requires no obligations on your part. Just hit that little red subscribe button and that little bell and we are in business. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. All right. Take care. Stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you at the next bite. Peace. Or rather, cheer.